Of course, um, in the last year, we've also, one of the things that came and made much headlines was uh, a particular property in Craigall that you were staying in, 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 in Hyde Park, yes. uh, a, a Mazzotti uh, property. I wonder, following that, how did you deal with that? And has that impacted then um, the nature in which you interact, even with people that uh, you are accepting, whether it's housing or any form of benefit from, even though they are your business associates, as you put it? No. Uh, my wife has got a, a, a house that is, she's renting from Mazzotti. It's not my house. I don't rent it. She's got all the right to rent any house she wants to rent. And uh, we are friends with Mazzotti. Surely, when the discussion is had, Mazzotti will say, I've got one of the properties somewhere, and then you can rent it out. She's paying rent. She's got a, a lease agreement. It's her own life. She doesn't need me to, to do those transactions. It's interesting to hear you speak like this because, of course, again, when we, we look at the, the past six years in totality, one of the big issues that was raised even about uh, On Point back then was that the network was so sophisticated that you didn't actually have to do anything yourself, but that there were specific people that you were engineering to do part of the business transactions, et cetera, that you would ultimately benefit from. And I wonder, why should people believe that that is not the case this time around? I don't know what you mean, sophistication, because everything is above board. The trusts are registered. The trusts have got accounts. The trusts pay tax. Uh, there is nothing underground. My trusts are declared in parliament. That I'm not hiding them. Uh, so there is no sophistication. Uh, it's just trust uh, doing uh, what they do, and uh, they meet the, uh, the requirements of the law uh, in South Africa. Let's take Ratanang Trust, for instance. It was reported to the master during that time. The master investigated and could not find anything wrong done by the trust. So. Uh, uh, you see, Kathy, there is a gossip and there is law. Uh, facts remain facts. You can't do anything, but you can't stop people from talking. Uh, uh, so if people suspect they are doing certain things, it's their own thing. Uh, as long as you know that you're not part. When I fight corruption, I fight it with a clear conscience. I'm not even thinking twice that you know, something can be brought against me, nothing like that. Oh, of course, often uh, what people reference is also what they see to be a display of a lavish lifestyle. And um, when they look at the kind of salary you would be receiving as an MP versus the kind of life that you live, uh, there certainly are questions about whether or not there are other people or the questions rather about how that lifestyle is being funded. But what lifestyle? Because I live in Odin. I just told you I don't have property, I don't have a car. You I live, live in, in Hyde Park. My wife <laughs> lives in Hyde Park. My wife is not an MP, a MP. My wife is a businesswoman in her own right. Unless you're saying an African woman can live in Hyde Park. You know that's not what I'm saying. No, but that's what you are saying because I told you my wife stays in Hyde Park. It's not me who stays in Hyde Park. So, so do you think that those who feel that you do live a lavish lifestyle are perhaps judging you harshly, that it is not an accurate... Because you've seen, you, you, you've seen the headlines in the well, newspapers. Like, you've seen right. the pictures of your LV belt and your oh, expensive is, is that, shoes. Is that what you call lavish lifestyle? You've seen the reports. I don't have to tell you many times about it. So when, when there are questions about where does all of this money come from? Where do you, on an MP salary, can you really afford a 30, 40,000 rand belt? There's no such a belt that I'm wearing of 30, 40,000 rand. There's, I don't, uh, and, but also I don't wear a belt, which is <laughs> it's not true, I don't wear a belt. So I don't, <laughs> which belt are you talking about? <laughs> I don't wear belt. So, I mean, uh, I, I, I look at some of these things and when I read about them, I, I think they're talking about someone else, not me. I don't live a, a lavish lifestyle. I live a basic life. Uh, uh, I'm just clean. People don't want people to be clean. When you are clean, they say it's lavish lifestyle. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to wear torn clothes and smell to look like a communist. Uh, they think not to, for you to be a communist, you must wear oversized clothes, torn clothes, and things that are not in good condition. No, I'm not saying I don't wear Louis Vuitton, I do. I wear Gucci, I wear any other thing I want to wear. 
which I can afford at the time. So even if I earn the same salary with you, our responsibilities are not the same. We do not come from the same background. My wife is working, so other people have got partners who are not working, you have to share the salary, and all. I may not have similar responsibilities. So, and therefore, I can afford from one, from time to time to spoil myself uh, with uh, nicer things. But generally, I'm not the type to, to, to display opulence. Because, of course, it, it comes up, and the reason why I bring it up is that it comes up as a critique of the EFF. Absolutely. That, uh, in fact, it's an organization that speaks left but walks right, you know. I they've accept been, that. Th there have been multiple reports around that. I accept that criticism. We, we must be scrutinized. And where we, we say this and do something else, people have to point out. But nowhere did the EFF say people can't stay in Hyde Park. Nowhere did the EFF say people must go and stay in the shacks. We want to take people out of the shacks, and therefore we can't go and stay in the shacks to demonstrate our commitment uh, uh, to the struggle to uplift the living conditions uh, of uh, our people. When I formed the EFF, my sister, I stayed in Santin. When I formed the EFF, my house in Santin was being auctioned live on television. People knew that I don't stay in Alex. People knew that I don't stay in Soweto, they knew this guy who's forming the EFF, West Louis Vuitton. I had that interview uh, with the Prapata before I formed the EFF. The facts were out there. And, and therefore, I didn't do anything that contradicts what I, I did in 2013. They came knowing. I never said to them, vote for me. I come from Alexander, will stay in Alexander, will stay in a shack. My children will go to public schools who will go. No, I've never said that. They came, supported EFF, knowing that the leader of the EFF stays uh, in Santen. Mandela is your hero, but Mandela stayed in Houghton. Tabombegi stays in Houghton. Kalema Mutlante stays in Houghton. So they remain heroes. Why are they not being questioned about their commitment to uplift the living conditions of poor people when they themselves are staying? in Santen. Are there rules for certain people and rules for other people? So really, this question, I don't find it a, 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 you know, genuine. I want to take you back to the kind of business associations that you spoke about where uh, your brother and Floyd's brother are involved in business and to the extent that um, they then were engaged with VBS because... That no, no, my brother's never engaged with VBS. Okay. Never. Okay. Okay. My brother was engaged with, brother, with Floyd's brother. And Floyd's brother was not engaged with VPS. Floyd's brother was engaged with that company which owned a majority shares in VPS. He never had any dealing with VPS. Never. How, how have you handled that? Because while you seem to say that there is no link between any monies that ever flowed out of VBS to either yourself or the deputy of your organization. Week on week, we have Sunday reports that are continuing to do investigations that prevent, that present paper trail that paints a different picture. So within the organization, um, how, how are you dealing with that? Oh, we can, we all see disparation when there is one. They, they can write any how they want. You see, if you've got a case, you present it once, you are done. You can't keep on repeating it and repeating it. It's an act of disparation. You can see they're trying to link everything. So let's now take the latest Sunday Times article about a house in, in, in Sundown. Our family bought a house in Sundown. 100% bond from Absa, my sister. Then they say, this is how VBS helped to get Malema a house in Santik. APSA, 100%. Actually, we rejected their offer. They wanted to give us 110%. We said, no, we cannot afford the installment. 100% bond. Then, no, we wake up one morning. That house is bought with VBS money. You can't even buy underwear. It's VBS money, everything. So what must I do? Those are not facts. I know the facts. The investigators of VBS know the facts. The police know the facts. The police do not follow gossip. They want facts. 
They want the fact. The fact is that that house in Sundown, 100% funded by APSA bond. So what do you think needs to happen for you to be able to shake off, as it were, this VBS stench? Uh, nothing. That nothing must happen. Nothing. Let them, let them repeat it. Many times they want to. They do it because they want to discredit us, because they want to settle political scores. They, it is white monopoly capital working with embedded journalism, which pursues Pravin's agenda. It's a political battle. Why should I be worried about a political battle? It's not genuine. It's not the real thing. EFF members can see it for what it is. Uh, so we have nothing. Uh, Floyd's brother took a loan from VBS, like the rest of them, by the way, who took loans. He paid his loan back. So what is the problem? He, he went to, and, 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 and I would have done the same if I wanted a loan before the disbandment of the VBS, when I came to know about it, I would have supported it because it's a black bank. So he took a loan, VBS got into trouble, he paid it back. It doesn't owe them anything. So, but they keep on coming, keep on coming, because it's a political agenda we're pursuing. And I'm happy South Africans are beginning to realize it because every time Sunday Times hits with such a front page, they go like, ah, you have started, try something else. They see it for what it is. I'm not going to do anything. It's like on point. I'm saying to you, I walk around with a crown of thorns called on point. Nothing has been proven. Only time will tell. They charged, dropped the charges, came back to charge again. Still nothing on me. Even this, you just look at it unfold. You, you are, you, I'm, I'm, I'm not worried. Floyd's brother never said he never had a transaction with VBS, went to speak to them. He, they, by the way, they even bought a house through VBS. They paid it off. We don't have such a thing. They paid that house. They are no longer in debt with those people. I want us to talk about your relationship with Floyd Shivambu. Yeah. Describe it to me. What kind of relationship? It's a relationship of Owar Tambo and Nelson Mandela. It's summarized like that. We're brothers. We went through all these things together, and there's nothing. Uh, there will never even be a point of contestation or a fight because everything is done in the open. We engage each other, we disagree vehemently, and say this is not the way to go, and ultimately a decision is taken, we move forward. How does that translate itself into the way things then unfold within the EFF as an organization, because the history that you and Floyd have is beyond the EFF. It begins before this organization. Those are the only two positions going into conference that will not be up for contestation. No, all positions are contested. I, I've read somewhere that even Floyd is going to be contested. I'm going to be contested. Everything is contested. We don't have a problem. Are you saying that you're going into this conference expecting somebody to put their hand up Absolutely. as leader of the EFF? Absolutely. Absolutely. Everything is available. My term ends now. It's done. And what happens at the conference, I can't predetermine it. The delegates will decide what needs to happen.